It started about half past six. It was dark. And people were saying, oh, it ain't our turn tonight, because this was the sort of conversations that used to go around. If, there, if it didn't start by six, just after six o'clock, it ain't our turn tonight. Much to everybody's surprise, the sirens went at half past six, and it wasn't very long before the bombs started to fall. Bristol before the war was a very, very uh, industrious place. We had so many industries here. We had paper, we had engineering, we had the, the aeroplane works, we had tobacco. Very diverse. And one of the favourites of everyone it was to go to Castle Street on a Saturday night. Castle Street on a Saturday night had to be seen to be believed. It was a seething mass of people. Everybody that knew everybody would be stopping and talking, and it got so bad at times that the police used to move people along because there was no way vehicles could go through Castle Street. Their shops stayed open till 10 o'clock at night, and people were always buying. There was always something to buy. And so Castle Street, in a way, was the sort of heart of Bristol. There was also two or three um, restaurants there that were very popular. There was an ice cream parlour, which was a new thing for us because, you know, just been sort of invented from the States. And um, Barisha's, uh, that, that, that was a place where the younger people used to get. And then, of course, there were the pubs. There was, I think, four or five pubs. And people used to come out of the pub with their pint of beer and chat. And so it was a very important part of Bristol's life and uh, the night that it was bombed in effect the heart was torn out of Bristol because not only the, the shops went but the reason for people went the reason for people to gather went so that was a great loss to Bristol So by the morning, what we had here was this bombed, unfunctioning um, shopping area with you know streets full of rubble and dangerous buildings and so on. After 24th of November, this very tightly packed area of Victorian and some earlier shops and cinemas and so on was not wholly destroyed, but partially destroyed. The raid came in three phases. The first phase was a uh, raid by incendiary bombers, and dropping incendiary bombs. This is the sort of device, the incendiary, uh, incendiary bomb, the device that, that was used on the first wave of the raids. And these started the fires. And then when the uh, second wave came, they had by this time altered the incendiary bomb to carry an explosive device within the tip. It was like this ring here had another ring on the, on the front. And this was the explosive device then. This was the detonating device in front. One of these things would take a shop front out as easy as ABC. And then of course it spread the fire and the fire spread then to Maryleport Street, to Wine Street, uh, parts of uh, Old Market Street. The raid lasted till about two o'clock in the morning. But, I mean, the raid don't finish when the bombers go. The fires go on and people are trapped. The people have to be dug out from bombed houses. Uh, it, there's always the smell. The smell of burning, the smell of wet wood. But you could occasionally smell there was something else, and it smelt like roast pork. It smelt like as if you overcooked some meat, and you knew that somebody was trapped inside of a building and was being burnt. And of course, that was the aftermath that you had to search buildings afterwards, and you found these 
charred remains of people. And that spell stayed round Bristol for God, I don't know how long. It, all, it seemed to be hanging about in the air. Terrible, terrible smell. I think that's the most lasting impression that I've got. The blitz is a smell, I can still smell it. It's a horrible smell. Um, I've lived in the city of Bristol almost since I was born. I was born in 1945, so really I started walking around this area, the Castle Park area, as it is now, um, back 1950, when I was about five years old. And as I was brought up with my grandmother, it was her that I tagged along with. And even then, some things struck me as being slightly strange. I'd say, you know, grandmother, why are all the buildings flattened here? Why are they all ruins? And she'd say, well, it's because of the Blitz. And I said, the Blitz? What's the Blitz? And she said, well, it's when the Germans dropped the bombs on us a few years ago. You know the Blitz. So I couldn't get my head around this. She assumed that I knew what it was because she'd lived through it, and it was only five or six years before. And of course, I didn't really know. And it took me some years to actually discover what the Second World War was all about. But it actually sparked an interest. Almost immediately, the shopkeepers got together and approached the council for permission to either start rebuilding these buildings or to erect temporary premises to continue shopping. And the council seemed to be about to give them permission to do that until in 1941 they got a, a letter from Boots, the chain store, the same one that's in town now, who said something along the lines of, if you don't rebuild the shops and instead if you go and rebuild somewhere else, then we'd definitely like to be part of it and we'd like to build a really big store there. So eventually the council decided not to rebuild the shops on Castle Park and instead to build the Broadmead Shopping Centre, which opened in 1958. The area that was Castle Street is now Castle Park. It's built on not only the history of the Blitz, it's built on the history of Bristol, but Bristol Castle because Castle Street was where the castle was. And during the Blitz, some of the exploding devices cleared areas and we saw what the chambers were like. It was quite a weird area here. You know, you had nothing but exposed cellars. There were the gaunt, burnt out remains of St. Peter's Church. Uh, there were some more gaunt remains along at the end of Bridge Street here and back of Bridge Street. A lot of this, this, this wartime <laughs> detritus was still being uh, passed around at the schools at that time and we swapped things like hand grenades, incendiary bombs, um, rows of bullets, all sorts of things. It was, it was like our currency, bits of shrapnel that people had collected during the war and we used to make, um, we used to open up cartridges and set the cordite alight and then let it fizzle away and that sort of thing and bang, bang the ends of bullets with, with, with nails to make them explode. So it was terribly dangerous what we did but there was so much material lying about. A few things still standing in, in what is now the Castle Park area uh, were the news theatre, which is, oh, I love the news theatre because we go in the, in the British restaurant first and then we trot across there and watch the cartoons and, and uh, on the newsreels with Grandma. Uh, and then there was the Bear and Rugged Staff and the Cat and Wheel pubs. And all three of those sadly were pulled down when the park was built, but they actually survived the Blitz. Most of my work in the last four years has been looking at the narratives associated with Castle Park, the different identities it's been given, the different futures that people have thought about giving it, but then not given it, or partially built, or had destroyed by bombing. I think people see Castle Park as the centre of the city in a way that the way they refer to Castle Park as the lung of Bristol makes it feel like it's worth keeping, it's a good thing because it's a green space in the centre of the city. Whether it's the centre as in town centre, it's not because the shops aren't here anymore um, and because people live differently. As I grew up, you know, to the age of 20, 25, 30, 
It almost became peculiar and strange to see the bomb sites disappearing. They were almost like old friends. You'd grown up with them. You suddenly go, oh, there was a bomb site there. Oh, there's a new store there now. You know, the city was changing and it wasn't the city you knew. Uh, so that, you know, is a little bit of nostalgia for bomb sites. And, and I don't think I'm the only person that feels this. You know, if you ask a lot of people at my age, I'm sure they do feel a little bit nostalgic about bomb sites, you know, for playing on them and all sorts of things. And they, were just, they were just part of the cityscape as we grew up. It, the, 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 just down below Castle Street was, was the theatre. There was a King's Cinema. There was the Queen's farther down. All these places were places of entertainment that brought people together. And it was a, the, the gathering point. Oh, I think it tore the guts out of Bristol. I, I, I think people just couldn't believe. I mean, that was where you went. This is where you saw your friends, this is where you met your family, this is where you went on Saturday night, and it wasn't there. The debates and anger and shouting and emotion about Castle Park is still very much going on now. On the, the west side of the park, there are pl plans to knock down two 1960s buildings and to put some sort of mixed-use development in there. And there's this general idea that it would be nice to reintroduce commerce and shopping. And of course, people are against it, but it's quite amazing to see quite how strongly Castle Park has been adopted as a park, as something that is untouchable. People have been trying to go through courts to get it turned into a a village green, which would be a specific designated status where, you, where the, nobody could build on it um, under any circumstances. And I just find that amazing when it's, it's sort of 32 years old and um, just 40 years before that there were tens of thousands of people protesting against it being turned into a park in the first place. I mean I suppose it's just a generational change that could happen anywhere, that speed of change must mean there's something important about it. <laughs>